All right, today we're gonna to be looking at a product that's just been sent to me all the way from Australia. It's referred to as the D8000 Plus. The manufacturer I'm unsure of, but the company who sent it was PMW Global. They're the, the distributor for this product. And uh, PMW is the initials of the owner. I was fortunate enough to meet Peter, who attended the TSEM training course in Sydney along with some other members of his organization. Uh, we met there, we kept in touch ever since, and he's kindly sent this for me to shoot a video so that we can demonstrate it, look at its strengths and weaknesses, and for you to get a better insight and a more of a sort of realistic uh, feel for the product and its functionalities. So let's have a look. So first of all, it's worth noting it comes in this Pelican style case. It's very, very solid, very robust, has a lock on the front. When we open it up, it has all of the standard foam material inside and it is nicely cut to fit the main unit body itself inside. It appears to have three antenna, uh, two whip style antennas and a shorter version. Luckily it has the international plug charging plug that comes with various uh, adapters, so it's for the UK of course, we have one here for the US and Canada and the Australian one as well. So let's get it out and take a look at its functionalities. Uh, before we do that let's take a look at some of the specifications of the product. So as you take it out of the box, it's worth noting that it has a very smooth design. There's not too much on it in terms of buttons and switches or logos or anything like that. It's very, very neat looking. It feels like it is made out of some sort of metallic material. Um, it feels very, very robust. It looks very neat. On the back, it has some sort of, uh, I assume this is for the battery. Yeah, that's so you can change the batteries. So that's all very neat. It's a rechargeable, replaceable battery. So I'm going to put that back in. As you can see, it highlights the free antenna where they're supposed to go. So the two here, uh, the, the, the left and the center ones are for the long antenna and the one on the right hand side is for the short antenna. And they are the same antenna as the WAM108T, so it's a push and click. Very straightforward, and there you have it. Any product that has whip antennas, the last thing you want to do is for them to be bent. So what I've done here is rather than lean it at an angle there and bending the whip antennas like that, I've put it inside the uh, compartment where the plug was so that the antenna, I'm just going to lift this up, you'll see that the antennas are no, not resting on the case at all. They're actually standing. There's a, there's a gap between the case and the antenna. So if we turn it on here. It has the, the on and off switch and the volume control as well. Now that it's on, it did actually take me a while to get used to this, if I'm being completely honest, because it only has this one button that controls practically everything. So the first thing you have access to is the range so you can adjust the range by going up or down okay and as you can see in this mode it simply changes from uh, 500 megahertz to 3000 megahertz right so park that to one side and the next 
control you have is the left to right, which changes it from from silent, which is on which it's on now, to uh, the audio beeps to let you know when it's detecting a signal and and the frequency in which it's detecting it and vibration mode and if you go left one more time you can have a combination of the two i personally always prefer to have them vibrate because the beeps you know for wanting a better phrase they drive me mad so i'm going to leave it on silent for now and then show you how they work in a moment now to get it from one mode to another you've got three uh, primary modes here uh, one is uh, this uh, the frequency counter mode which basically tells you what signal it's detecting uh, the cell phone mode which highlights the different types of frequencies that fall within the cellular networks uh, and, and, and their bandwidths and then you've got the wideband mode which practically tells you everything that it can detect so to get from one to the other this is where I struggled I was I kept pressing right and left and what that was doing is turning on the the vibration and beep controls as you can see here in the top right hand corner next to the battery which is actually running low so I need to be pretty quick now to change from one mode to another you simply hold the central button down and as you can see it changes now what I'm going to do now you can see all of the different uh, GSM and the LT bandwidths there and the other thing now to look at which has changed is the sensitivity right so it's on maximum and I'm just going to change that by going up or down. Yeah, down. So now it's set to medium. And now it's set to minimum. So that's the standard free settings. When it is a digital product like this, it's going to be one of those three options typically. So this, most products of this nature only have those three settings. Now, it's better if it's analog. You can control it yourself. Some of the cheaper products which are analog allow you to control it completely so you can do a proximity test uh, for those of you who are unsure what proximity test is it is where you literally put a device near it and then take it away to establish how sensitive the item or products is so that's the cell phone mode i'm now going to switch it over to the wideband mode in fact before i do switch over to the wideband mode I just want to show you, um, now it's on minimum, I'm going to put it back up to ma maximum by going up or down, so up in this case, and then I'm going to turn on the volume, and actually that's the beeping and the vibration, not sure if you can hear that, I'll put the microphone really close to it, but that's the vibration, vibration. now I'm going to turn it onto minimum. My phone's quite near to it, so so you can hear that vibrating there as opposed to the beeping, and the beeping of course will sound just like that. I'm going to turn it up a bit, the sensitivity up a bit more so you get more beeping. And the combination of the two is like this, so quite annoying if you're sensitive to beep sounds like I am. I'm going to turn that off now and I am then going to hold down to switch it onto wideband mode which this is more like a RF analyzer so it's telling us basically everything it's detecting and the issue that I have with these this mode and, and RF analyzers in general is that it's great to look at but it doesn't actually really tell you what it is it you know unless you're an expert with an amazing memory with respect to bandwidths and numbers which I definitely am not you're going to struggle to identify what the source of the radio frequency is now I'm going to switch it back to cell phone mode I'm going to put it on uh, maximum because it's setting all of the uh, signals off at the moment and it's just to demonstrate uh, the different types of signals going to pick up the different bandwidths and everything else so let's take a look at the pros and cons of this product the downside is that it is relatively restricted in terms of what it can detect now in theory it can detect any rf device that falls within the bandwidth stated in its specification but what it struggles to do wasn't what it doesn't do very well here well, it does it well with cell phone detection, okay? So cellular bandwidths, it does it very, very well. 
but it doesn't do it for things such as broadband and other devices that fall within other bandwidths. So this is what it should be like in my opinion. There should be more of these on other pages. That said, it does it does have the ability to detect all of these things, right? So if you go to wideband mode, as I saw earlier, it tells you everything it does. And if you in fact you go back to frequency counter mode, it will tell you uh, what frequencies it is detecting. And you saw earlier the proximity test working if I set it to minimum so it is the other downside is that the controls are pretty basic that said it looks very very neat and the controls once you get the hang of them they do everything you need them to do I've just realized I'm actually wearing a, a, an Apple watch which is why every time I go near it it's it's picking up a signal I kind of forgot about that um, but you know it is a very capable product and the other plus side is that it and the other benefit is that it's relatively well priced. I, one of the I'm not going to say what the price is at the moment. One of the reasons is because if the price changes, this video goes out of date very, very quickly. But the other reason is because it's going to vary, obviously, country to country. And as I said before, the company that kindly sent this over to us in the UK, um, who are based in Australia, will be sending it for one price in Australia. And of course, that will vary. Uh, from country to country in the UK. We're going to be retailing this on the Security Academy, so uh, this isn't a completely impartial video. I I just wanna uh, demonstrate the product and look at some of the pros and some of the cons and uh, give you some honest feedback on it. Um, but I, I actually really like it. I think it's really well designed. I'm gonna take it out a little bit and show you a bit more. I just think it's a really neat product. It's, in terms of handheld size, it's a good, Good size with the antenna it's a little bit longer it's neat it, you know there aren't many ports to it there's one there for the charging um, even the battery uh, compartment is well designed at the back I suppose if you position that correctly it could act as a, uh, a leaning tool I have to say I do like the design it's just the capabilities are limited but it would make an excellent piece of kit uh, if you add other equipment as well. So this could be part of a, a very, very, very capable piece of equipment that makes up a larger TSCM kit. Now, no TSCM, there is no product that does everything. There just isn't, right? With respect to TSCM, as you probably know, if you uh, work in this field already, or if you've done some research into this, you will know that there's no product that can do everything. It, um, and if, it, to be honest, um, we will be carrying these, you know, um, our TSCM operatives here in the UK uh, and in Canada, possibly Ghana, in fact, very possibly Ghana, and quite possibly in Australia as well, will definitely, definitely be carrying these devices. If we have a larger sweep and we have to split the team to do different things, this will be something that we use as part of our kit. It won't be the main uh, RF detection product, but if, if you're just starting out, there is absolutely no reason why it couldn't be. It is extremely well priced, in my opinion, for what it is. And yes, there are some downsides, but in my honest opinion, and I am being impartial here, I would, you know, like, this decision's already made, because we are going to be, we are going to be using these products, these devices. It is extremely capable, and it's neat too. So, I'm gonna, um, because of the issue with regards to me talking about the price on this video, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the comments below. Please feel free to ask any questions you might have about the product in the comments below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you as soon as I can. If you would like to see this in action, you can either uh, attend one of the uh, TSM courses are going to be take play, taking place in the UK, Canada, US or Australia and Ghana as well. We will be doing more reviews on different products uh, from a number of organisations. Hopefully we'll get some more from, from Peter and his company, uh, PMW Global. But genuinely a very, very capable piece of kit for a very reasonable price. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.